For this lesson, we're going to be focusing on quantization error. Just to give you a heads up, this lesson does go hand in hand with the pulse modulation lesson. So, what is quantization error? It's the difference between the analog signal and the digital output. This is due to a rounding error. Now, any error in the sampling or quantization process is referred to as noise or distortion. Now, just to give you a heads up, some of your textbooks or PE references may refer to quantization error as quantization noise or quantization distortion. Since quantization error is due to the rounding process, the maximum quantization error can only be half the voltage of the quantization step. So what this means is, if you look at the illustrations below, you can see the quantization signal, it's either rounding up or down compared to the input signal. Now, if you want to minimize this error, you can increase the number of quantization levels. The more levels you have, the smaller the error this becomes. With the quantization error being the difference between the input signal and the quantization signal, it gives us our own separate quantization error signal. Now in blue, it shows a perfect sine wave. That's not usually the case. Usually it's very distorted and very ugly. However, this is just to provide you with a little visual aid. Now the equations to your left, you can find the noise power or the noise voltage just by using the resolution or the peak voltage. Now here's where the rubber really meets the road. Signal to noise ratio. This is a concept you're going to see more than once. In fact, there's going to be a whole lesson just on signal noise ratio just by itself. Now, since there's quantization error, there's also going to be signal noise quantization noise ratio. So there's going to be a little overlap. Signal noise ratio is the relative or average measurement of the desired signal power to noise power, or in this case, quantization error. Now, the equations I have below, I have two for the sine wave and one for the sawtooth or triangle wave. And then I also provided two additional signal noise ratio generic uh, equations. And these are ones you'll come and see amongst all your PE references or PE handbooks. So let's go ahead and jump in some example problems. That way you can get your feet wet of how to use these uh, equations. All right, we're going to start off with an easy one. From the previous lesson, pulse modulation, the USB microphone had a bit depth of 16. What is the likely signal noise ratio for this device? Negate all other additional microphone features such as noise canceling, sensitivity, etc and consider the noise to be minimal. So this one, it's going to be very simple. All we want to find is the signal noise ratio. So that right there. Now, first thing we're going to assume is anytime you have a microphone, you're going to be using sine waves. So it's going to be one of these two guys. You can use the first or the second one. They're going to give me similar answers. They're not going to be exact, but they're going to be similar. Let's go ahead and try the second one since we already know the number of bit. So we're going to say signal to noise ratio equals 1.76 plus 6.02 times n, which in this case it's going to be 16, so I'll go ahead and rewrite that. 1.76 plus 6.02 times 16. So, of course, using our calculator, this one's going to give us 96.32 plus 1.76, and that's pretty easy. It's going to give us a grand total of 98.08, and that's going to be decibels. So that was one way we can find it. Let's try this other equation just to make sure that one works just as well. So we have signal to noise ratio equals 10 log, and that's three times the number of levels square. Well, we can find the number of levels real quick. L equals 2 to the n. So levels equal 2. We'll put 16 right there because we already know it. So the number of levels equals, plug that and chug that in our calculator, 65,536. And that's how many levels we have. So your signal noise ratio equals 10 log three times. And this is going to be 65536 squared. Now I'm just going to plug and chug this in the calculator just to make it easy on myself. So it's going to give us a signal noise ratio of 101.1 decibels. These equations did come out two separate references. However, you do have similar outputs. You can see that's 98 decibels and that's 101. So that's pretty close. So right now we have pretty similar signal noise ratios. Now one other thing I want to just make clear, that one statement at the end where it says negate all other microphone features and consider the noise to be minimal. If you look at a spec sheet on the USB microphones, 
you're not going to see a signal noise ratio of 100 or 98 for these particular microphones. Usually some of them you'll see between 74 and 58. However, there's other features involved and other things going on. But this should just give you a proof of concept. This was a good starter example. Let's go into another one. For this example, we got ourselves a good one. In a PCM system, pulse code modulation, an output signal measured approximately at 6.175 volts peak. What would be the estimated noise voltage if the signal noise ratio was at least 128 decibels? We'll start with an easy one first. Since we did signal noise ratio in the previous problem, let's do that again. So we know, and we'll use this equation just because I like it because it's easy and it's common. We have a signal noise ratio of 128 decibels. All right, and first thing we can find with this particular equation is the number of bits. So for this one, it's 128 decibels equals, and that's 1.76 plus 6.02 in, and we can obviously subtract the 1.76 from the side, put it over here. That's going to give us 126.24 equals 6.02 to the end, and when we can divide both sides by 6.02, and that's going to give us an answer of 20.97 bits, or in this case, it's going to be approximately 21 bits. Anytime you have a decimal point with your bits, you're always going to have to go up by one. So if you have like 20.1, 20.5, you're going to have to go up to the next level, which is 21 can't go down because we said at least a signal noise ratio of 128 so we're going to go up so I'll mark this over here number of bits equals 21 all right so we found that out pretty easy now with that we can find the number of levels as well because levels equal 2 to the number of bits so this one's going to be L equals 2 to the 21 and that's going to give us an answer of it's going to be 2 million 97,152. Put commas in there, we can see it really well. So I'll put that up here. Levels equals 2 million, comma, 97,152. Okay, so far so good. So right now we're knocking out these little bit by bit. Well, right now I think we have enough information here to find at least the noise power. If you look at this one right here, we have the peak voltage, we have the number of levels, so I think we could find the actual noise power. So, i put it right over here. Noise power equals volts peak square over three times the number of levels square. So, plug and chug this in there, it's going to be 6.175 volts peak, and we'll put a square there, over three times and this is going to be, I'll just put L for right now, square. Plug and chug this in our calculator, giving us an answer of 2.89 times 10 to negative 12. And that's going to be in watts, because that's going to be our power. That's pretty easy, so I'll put right up here. Noise power is 2.89 times 10 to the negative 12. Now this one, I want to find our noise voltage. So, I'll tell you what, let's go a step further. Let me clean all this up. Now I want to go a few extra steps. I want to try to find my resolution using the same equation. So now, I have power, which is N of Q, equals your resolution square divided by 12. So all I have to do is just to manipulate this using algebra is 12 times my noise power gives me my resolution squared, which means all I have to do is square root both sides. So I just do this, and that's going to give me my resolution equals 12 times power squared. So that's pretty simple, and I already have my power right there, so I can just plug and chug that in there. So it's going to be resolution equals, there we go, 12 times 2.89 times 10 to negative 12. And we plug chug that in our calculator. It's going to give us a resolution of 
five point we'll say eight nine and now it's gonna be microvolts. So that one's pretty easy. And all I'm doing is using algebra and just manipulating these equations as I need them. Now that I have my resolution, I can actually plug a chug in this guy now. So my noise power is going to be noise power equals be my resolution divided by the square root of 12. Well, got my resolution right there. Square root of 12 is pretty easy. So this is just a plug and chug in the calculator. So I'm going to put 5.89 microvolts over square root of 12. And this is going to come out to be 1.7 microvolts. So right there, that's our answer. Now we can always do a quick dummy check. I can use that guy right there just to do a dummy check. So it's pretty easy. We have our volts for signal right there, volts for noise right there, and then we can plug and chug that in our calculator. So this one's going to be signal to noise ratio equals 20 log and our signal voltage is 6.175 volts over 1.7 microvolts. And I can plug and chug that and it'll give us an answer of 131.2 decibels. So right there, that confirms our answer. And you can always use this equation again if you'd like. Type in the number of levels, square it times three, log 10, and it's also gonna give you a similar answer as well. So let's do one more problem. Now for this last one, I like to throw a little curveball at you as far as a little visual aid here. This one, based on oscilloscope display, determine the quantization noise, power and voltage, and the signal noise ratio. This is very similar to the previous problem, but for this one, I wanna throw a drawing in there just to make it interesting. We have our sine wave, which is our input signal, and our quantization signal, which is our square wave. And we wanna determine our noise as well as our signal noise ratio. Well, we can do the similar thing as we did last time. The first thing we already know is, because it's already shown on to the right, our quantization levels. There's 256 levels. So right there, we already know L equals 256. Now, we can also find the number of bits just as easy. By using our calculator, you can determine the number of bits just by plugging and chugging this one equation right there. So in this case, it's going to be n equals log of 2 l. So it's going to be log of 2, 256, and plug and chug that one. And that's going to give us an answer of 8 bits. So that one was pretty simple. Number of bits, 8. So we found bits, we have levels. Well, since I asked for the noise level first, let's try to find that and still, instead of going for our signal noise ratio. Let's do signal noise ratio last. So I'm gonna clean up the bottom real quick. We have a peak to peak voltage of five volts because we're going up to 2.5 volts and we're going down minus 2.5 volts. So that tells us, and I'll put it right here to the right, our peak to peak voltage is five volts. That means our V peak is 2.5 volts because we're going from zero to 2.5. Okay, so far so good. Now right now I can just plug and chug it if I like in this equation, since we have it, we can use that one just as easy. So we can find the noise power instantly. So N of Q equals V peak squared over three times the number of levels squared. So this one, I already know my peak now, it's 2.5 volts, square that one over and it's going to be three times number of levels, which in this case it's 256. It's a given. And we're going to square that one. And we'll plug and chug that in our calculator. It's going to give us noise power of 3.179 times 10 to the negative 5 watts. That's not bad. So let's see if I can fit this over here. Noise power is 3.179 times 10 to negative 5. All right, let me clean this up. Now we can find our noise voltage. I can show you another method of doing that. So look at these two equations. What is the difference between your noise power and your noise voltage? Well, if you look at it, all they did was just square one side. So it's going to look something like this. Noise voltage equals noise 
power squared. So check this out. If we're going to have noise power equals resolution squared over 12. Well, if you square this guy, that means you got to square that one and square that one. And that's going to come out to be noise voltage equals Q, because the square and a square root cancel each other out over square root of 12, which is how we got that equation right there. So all I have to do is square root this answer right here, and that will give us noise voltage. So I'm going to clean this up. So it's going to be noise voltage equals square root over 3.179 times 10 to the negative 5. And that's an easy calculator to plug and chug. It's going to give us a noise voltage of 5.638 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's how many volts we have. So our noise voltage is going to be 5.638 times 10 to the negative 3. So we just found number 1. Now we can do our signal noise ratio. So let me clean this up. Now, I can do my signal noise ratio by using this guy right here, this guy, or I can even go as far as using either one of these two guys. But what I'm going to do is, similar to the last problem, I'm going to use all three just to do a proof of concept. So we'll do the first one. We'll say signal noise ratio equals 10 log and then three times your level squared. So it's going to be 10 log, and that's 3 times, and that's 256 squared. And that's going to give us an answer of 52.94, and that's decibels. I'll tell you what, let's do this one next. Let's say signal noise ratio equals, and this is the most common and the easiest one, so I expect you to probably use this one the most just to save yourself time. So we already know the number of bits, which is 8. So it's going to be 6.02 times 8 plus 1.76. And that's going to be our signal noise ratio. It's going to be an easy plug and chug. It's going to be approximately 49.92 decibels. Now, since this is a common one, you may see it also in some of your books. They'll even give you a rule of thumb. They'll say 8 bits times 6 will give you your pretty close to your signal noise ratio. Not very accurate, however, if you need to save time and just get an estimate, it's a pretty good rule of thumb. All right, let's do our last one. Let's do this one right here. We'll say our signal to noise ratio equals 20 log, and this is going to be, we'll say our signal voltage, so this one's 2.5. We're going to do our peak, 2.5 volts peak over our noise, which is 5.638, I'll say milli, see if I can fit it in there. And the same thing, we're going to plug and chug that in that calculator. And that's going to also give us an answer of 52.94 decibels. So right there, we have three similar answers. This will usually give you one that's a little off, but still, again, close enough for what you're going to be calculating. For this lesson, we're focused on the quantization noise, not necessarily the signal noise ratio for the whole system. Now, in later lessons, we're going to be focusing mostly on these two equations right here, but I just want to throw them in there. That way you see them more than once. I want you to get practice with it because they will come up very often. Hopefully this is enough information to make you dangerous. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.